Looking at the sky, you might be mistaken that it's really early in the morning, but actually it's closer to 9 a.m. right now in Paris. Good morning, everyone. I'm Weilun, and welcome to the Gourmet Plate. Today is going to be a bread and pastry day. We're going to bring you to a few really popular bakeries and pastry shops, starting with Dupont et Decide, which is a very well known spot for their escargot bread. I'll be on that in a while. And after that, we're probably going to drop by at Notre Dame area, visit a few touristy spots, followed by another bakery and subsequently another pastry shop. So, three places to go today. I don't know if you are ready for it, but I sure am. Let's go! Here we've got our bread and pastries. It's really, really cold today. I think it's negative one degrees. And how is the cappuccino? It's turned cold. <laughs> it has turned into a... Cold. Yeah. But it's still sort of warm. Mm. Anyway, let us quickly begin. This tree is very well known, as I mentioned, for their escargot. I guess it's called escargot pastries. The reason why they're called escargot is not because they actually place escargot in them, but rather it is... Um, the shape itself that looks like an escargot. Look at these beautiful layers of these pastries. <laughs> you can see the steam. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's so cold. Anyway, they have got a few uh, very popular variants. I think one is the pistachio, one is the rum, and the, the other is raspberry. raspberry. Yeah. yeah, the most popular I think is the pistachio, but we have tried that. So today we got the rum instead. Quack, go ahead and start this off. How is it? For the texture, it's uh, crispy outside and soft inside with a little bit chew. But the flavour, I just can taste there's a sweetness. But the rum, I don't really taste it. <laughs> Maybe let me try. Okay. <laughs> Probably because uh, it's really cold and quite a little bit of blocky, so let's go. Very similar to the koi almond texture. Mm. Almost flaky outside, not exactly very. Yeah. Inside is chewy and soft, like I mentioned. Sweetness hits first. Okay, you gotta search for the rum flavor, I'm not gonna lie. And if you grab some raisins, I think they are raisins, right? Mm. You get the raisins, it gives you the raisin sweetness as well. I prefer this over the pistachio. Oh. This pistachio, I could oh. barely taste the pistachio. Yeah, and it's good. just sweetness, sweetness, sweetness. From the chocolate okay. chips. It's more like a chocolate escargot rather than a pistachio escargot. Yeah. This one you can actually taste a rapid. You just gotta search for it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the middle is where most of the excitement happens. We should have been for the whole thing though, I'll be honest. So you are sharing with your friends. Get them to eat the edges first. Can you eat the middle? <laughs> That's where the rum is at! Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Let's do the croissant first, shall we? Alright, this croissant is more uh, elongated <laughs> in shape. It's uh, a little bit smaller than the example of like Store in our first episode. It's also not the most beautiful one, I'll be honest, but let's go. Mm. Flaky outsides. Middle is chewy. Oh, you can taste the butter fragrance. Saltiness hits. The butter saltiness. Then, sweetness from the dough. You can even taste a little bit of that uh, caramelized surface there, that little bit of bitterness. Mm. I know the texture inside is more like a chewy bread. It doesn't really have that puffy texture. Crusty all in all, decent croissant. What about the pan au chocolat? This basically is a croissant with chocolate bar inside. The texture actually is just like a croissant, flaky outside with a soft inside. And the chocolate bar inside is a sort of like semi hot dark chocolate, not too sweet and not too milky. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's it for this spot. My fingers are frozen off. We're going to the next one. Let's go. So we're in the Notre Dame area and after having that satisfying but really really cold breakfast at Dupont Edicide, 
Okay, let's go for some sightseeing. So this is the flower market and it's basically like um, a small square with a lane right in the middle and over here you can just see a lot of beautiful flowers, vibrant colours, even some fruits. Just look at the hedgehog over there, <laughs> such a cute little thing. So do consider dropping by at the flower market if you happen to be in this area. Next up we're going to visit a rather historical building and it's called the Saint Chapelle. See that pillar over there? That is the Saint Chapelle and it's located in a former royal palace for the French kings during the 6th century up to the 14th century called the Palais de la Cité. And the Saint Chapelle is basically a royal church and it was used to store uh, sacred relics inclusive of the crown of Jesus. And this historical architecture is a spot that you definitely must visit if you're in Paris because it is actually where you view the very well-known magnificent stained glass. All the beautiful like rainbow colored glass to room. This is a spot. That you definitely have to visit it to view it in all its glory. Of course, to visit it on the outside, you do not have to pay its free entrance, but to get in to that room with the stained glass, you do have to pay an entrance fee. I personally think it's pretty costly. So if you're on a very tight budget, I think you can sort of just visit the outside and the insides you could sort of just view it um you know on youtube just watch the videos cameras generally do a better job in showcasing uh, what the stained glass has to offer but if you are in there and you're visiting uh, they actually have these leaflets or these uh, boards that give you information on how the stained glass are made and those are the things that can help you enrich your experience with the saint chapelle now with that being done let's get on to the next spot Behind me is a bookstore called Shakespeare and Company and it is a very well-known tourist spot as well as a second-hand bookstore that also sells really really old books. It's I think established by George Whitman and I don't know much about the history of this bookstore I'll be honest. All I know is that there are a lot of pretty well-known writers and pretty well-known people who have been here for an extended period of time. They don't allow any photography or videography in there but I would strongly recommend just dropping by and taking a look. The feeling inside is just really surreal to be surrounded by lots and lots of books. It's also a free reading library if I'm not wrong. So aside from buying books, you can actually just sit down there and read some books for free. It's a pretty cozy place and really nice, so I strongly recommend to visit because it's free anyway. Two spots down, let's head for some food first before we head to the next spot. We are at La Maison d'Isabelle and this is currently my favourite patisserie for croissant and baguettes. So. This place has won the best croissant competition in year 2018. So far we have tried quite a number of croissants and I think these guys, they've got something really magical going on with their croissants. Anyway, we have purchased one of their croissants and a pain au chocolat. Let's quickly start with the croissant first. <laughs> that butter fragrance it gets to me every time. <sighs> Such a marvellous creation and look at this croissant. It's one of the more pretty ones for sure, one of the more delicate ones. Very uniformly coloured as well. Yep. Best. Also. Mm. That fragrance of the butter. You know, we've tried some croissants that have really strong fragrance of the butter where it really hits you, like attacks you. This, it flows harmoniously. So, like a, like a little stream. It's just imagine a little butter stream and the fragrance just slowly flows out of the croissant as you chew. Chew after chew. The fragrance is so well balanced. It's salty, it's savory, and it's buttery, but it's not oily and the texture. I think this has the best texture balance. The outside is flaky, it has a little bit of crisp and the inside it's got a very nice airiness, puffiness and that chew is not too chewy neither is it you know like dead inside. It's got a life to it. I don't know what I've done with the dough 
it's just so lively it sort of like sings to you in a way i love this croissant so much in terms of taste and texture this is the best this surface looks very clean very perfect because normally there will be some damages on the surface The texture is more crispy than the croissant but it's less chewy maybe because of the layer is uh, less than the croissant you can see here and the chocolate is very quick quality it's moderate sweet with some bitterness mm. I think not puffy enough and the chocolate flavor is too strong and overpower the dough sweetness and fragrance this is not the best pound chocolate we have yeah Tastes sort of more like a cracker than a pound with chocolate. Anyway, they have also got another item that is really really good, which is the baguette. And we actually tried it during our last few visits. Today, is, for some reason, they are not selling the sandwiches. But definitely when you drop by and they are selling the baguette sandwich, try it. Especially the one with ham and cheese and mustard. That is really good. The baguette has very good texture and also very very good fragrance and flavour. It's the best baguette we have tried so far. There are a lot of closer ones, like really good ones as well, but this is the best. So come here for their croissant and the guest sandwich. Yeah, uh, you can skip the pound of chocolate. <laughs> anyway, now we have eaten, let's head to the next tourist spot, the Notre Dame. The building behind me is the Notre Dame, and the pillar in the middle is missing. But don't worry, I brought you the Notre Dame right here. And I believe this pillar. It's not there, uh, they haven't restored it yet. But yeah, this is, this is the front of the Notre Dame. This is what it is. And I brought these dishes specifically for this occasion. So you used to be able to visit the insides of the Notre Dame, I believe you have to pay an entrance fee. But since the fire in 2019, you can no longer visit it and it's under restoration for quite a while now. The government of France hoped that they could complete the restoration before the 2024 Olympics. But still, I strongly recommend that you come and visit this spot because there are actually these boards surrounding the structure which explains what happened in the fire and the restoration progress uh, that has been happening to the Notre Dame. But that's enough tourist spots for the day. Let's go and have some food again. We're going to start with some coffee this time around, followed by some sweets. Let's go. Alright guys, we are at this cafe called La Café Hossique. It's recommended by one of our Parisian friends. Uh, thanks Yidi for the recommendation. Very nearly like home run kind of uh, cafe. And you start with lots and lots of different kinds of beans for you to pick from. We are not coffee experts, so we asked uh, the kind man there at the counter to recommend the coffee to us. And we got this, which is I think the Guji. I think this is more of a flowery notes kind of coffee. And because it's a recommendation for coffee beans, so what happens is you buy the coffee beans, and then you head to the back and you hand the coffee beans to the barista and then the tear tricks begin. This is called a slow coffee. So basically what happens is they grind down the, the coffee beans into powder and I don't know what is the process but they just pour hot water and let the, the coffee slowly like sort of uh, like tea steeping kind of manner. And then comes the coffee and they even hand you this grounded coffee in its powdery form as well as the coffee beans themselves right over here. So you can sort of like smell them it's got really that the flowery kind of note to it anyway let us try the coffee quickly because we're outside and might get cold soon mm, fruity mild very mild but very nice fragrance mm, it's very pleasant it starts off with a bit of this acidity and then the bitterness very soothing very harmonious and then the fruity tones come out and the bitterness lingers on your tongue. It's not a very strong coffee and I quite like it. Mm. I'm not a coffee guy, but I can tell that this is definitely a good quality type of coffee. So yeah, thanks for the recommendation, Yi. Even though we are not coffee people, but this is nice.
We are now at another patisserie, it's called Yang Couvre. This is again recommended by our Parisian friend Yili, and apparently they are very popular and well known for their Paris breast. Their Rue Pistache Janduja. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And their Tart Isotis. Alright, because Kred is not a vanilla person, so let's start with the Isotis first, which is a vanilla and pecan tart. Nuts. They are toasty. The vanilla flavor is not overly strong. You can definitely taste the vanilla in there. And the cream is quite light. It's sweet. It's fluffy. And the tart is a hard biscuit type. It's a very nice contrast in textures between the really soft, fluffy vanilla cream and that biscuit. It's nearly like a slightly harder McBeaties. And it's got that nice, savory saltiness and the toastiness of the biscuit with it. And underneath, there are some, some of that, like, I think it's caramel sauce. And it gives you that caramelly sweetness as well. Oh, it's a very delightful kind of cake. And surprisingly, it doesn't taste too heavy on the palate. Next up, try the Paré Breast, which is a chose pastry with hazelnut praline and hazelnut on the top. The hazelnut flavor is very strong. I would say super strong. We are very good way, yeah. And the sweet is uh, just nice, and it won't be too over sweet. It's very matched with the hazelnut flavor. You can see that actually is a lot of the far line, the cream, the hazelnut cream, and the chute actually is very thin. This Paris breast is hazelnut gold. Compared to Star Rare, Star Rare is a beginner entry level for Paris breast, and this is an advanced level. Alright, next up, the pistachio, which is also a signature dish. And you can see, I think the base is sort of like a short bread, but it looks really, really flaky with a lot of layers. And the top is just laden with caramel and some pistachio cream, along with a lot of pistachio on top. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, this one is good. This one is really good. I thought you go past the flaky surface, and it's slightly chewy. The cream is not that. The pistachio's natural flavor, it hits you head on. And then you get the toasted pistachio roasted flavor. Not too sweet. Mm. Mm -mm. And then now you start tasting the buttery fragrance of that pastry outside. Mm. This is good. You can taste the caramels, the slight bitter caramelly sweetness as well. Mm. This is very well balanced, not too sweet, crazy good. Even if you do not like pistachio, as long as you don't hate it, take the pistachio. It's, it's good lah, it's just good. No way other ways, it's just good. This is like vanilla ice cream with pecan nuts. Okay guys, it's late time. We've got a lot of spots to go. Let's start with the pan and the I would say very decent pastries. The croissant, the pan au chocolat, the escargot pistachio, and the escargot ramen raisin. They're all really decent, but I do think if you're in Paris and you have eaten quite a few patisseries or boulangeries, maybe you can have better choices. Uh, I know they are very, very popular for the escargot and they're quite pretty to look at and very interesting but if you just want to try for novelty purposes then I guess it's fine. It's alright, it's decent. Could have been better and with that said, the pie at DCD scores an okay on the gourmet plate because of their good quality ingredients and their pastries. If you're nearby and it's your first time trying out, yeah you can definitely drop by. For Isabel, they have really good croissant and baguettes. We both like it. And I would say this is so far the best croissant and baguette we have in Paris. The quality is very good. The dough fragrance, the butter fragrance, all is very balanced. Yeah, very harmonious, very well balanced. And really, the, the croissant just blows everyone out of the water. Mm. In terms of balance and harmonization. For this person's idea. So absolutely, if you are in Paris, and you try croissants and baguettes, Isabel. Drop by. Yeah. Okay, Isabel. So with that being said, Isabel score one plate in the gourmet plate. Which means they have some really high quality croissants and baguettes with glimpses of genius. Yeah. The genius specifically applies to the croissant. Mm. Really, really good. You gotta drop by and try them out. And they are very consistent too. Throughout our visits.
All right, for the coffee spot, because we are not uh, coffee and, uh, like experts or enthusiasts, so we can't really comment much. Therefore, we will not play it. But from a layman perspective, I would say we really enjoy it very much. I think it's very high quality coffee, and it's very easy to drink, even for someone who doesn't drink coffee. So very nice, definitely check them out. Uh, thank you very much to our barista, the kind Juliana Silva from Honduras, as well as that man. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Very nice and kind of you to explain to us and recommend to us the coffee beans. So for the last Yen Kroa, a very high quality pastry. Yeah, absolutely delicious as well. All the three of the sweets that we have tried are very nice. Mm. Uh, Pari breast is the richest that we have had. But it does feel a little bit overpowering towards the end. So I would strongly recommend that you share them even though they look really small. Uh, the same thing applies to the vanilla tart. I think the thing that really blows me away is actually the pistachio pastry, which is really, really just, just really good. If you drop by, just try it. And it's just pretty well balanced. It's also a pretty heavy pastry but way better balance compared to the rest. And with that being said, Yen Kuvre Patisserie scores a one plate on the Gourmet plate, which means they have some really high quality pastries with glimpses of genius. The genius specifically being the pistachio pastry. Mm -hmm. But I still strongly recommend that you guys share it, because it could really get quite sweet towards the end. I guess that's it for our food vlog for the week. Uh, it's quite a long journey and today has been totally just sweet stuff and some uh, pastries and breads and things. So really enjoy it. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. See you again next week. In Paris. Bye.